originally were from a place called Falkirk in Scotland. Um, it's about 40 minutes from Glasgow, which is probably the place that everyone would know the most. Yeah, so we knew each other, um, not connected to music for actually quite a while um, because we both support the same football team. And then, um, yeah, we used to go to the games uh, on a bus full of loads of people together. But um, yeah, when we really knew each other in relation to music, um, that was, yeah, just because I had a friend who lived in the same village as, as Raymond and uh, I was interested in like making music and trying to do all that kind of stuff. And he said, well, I'm, actually, I, a guy from my village does that already. And, uh, and then when he told me it was Raymond, I was like, oh, yeah, I actually already know who Raymond is. So then, yeah, from that we spoke about it. That was the first time we realised that there was a connection music related. Well, we started going to parties together, like uh, in Holland first. And then uh, <clears throat> we just kind of got talking, you know, uh, a little bit drunk or whatever you want to call it. Um, and yeah, we just ended up uh, vibing on our opinions on uh, on music and the way hardstyle was heading and I was already like making hardstyle and stuff like that so yeah it just kind of uh, became natural. Yeah every every game was uh, was pretty crazy it's uh, Glasgow Rangers so that yeah the fans are known for being crazy but especially in our area because everyone's fanatics but it was always fun I wouldn't say anything like bad crazy happened but Definitely, like, yeah, things that you wouldn't want to, anybody else to see. Uh, we moved to the Netherlands in, was it 2016? Yeah. 2016, and uh, yeah, we, we were already getting bookings like almost every week uh, here, and we were flying, and yeah, flying was just becoming a bit of a pain in the ass, and it's more productive if we live here. I mean, we can get more bookings, it's, yeah, you're in the epicenter, you know, of uh, making hard still, so yeah. it was kind of natural to be here. The problem is the scene's not as big in Scotland, so yeah, it's it's hard for people to understand, you know, like even explain it to someone that you can make a living uh, being a DJ and making music in hardstyle. It just yeah, they, they they don't really understand it because they don't see like a death gone or something, so it doesn't really make sense. But when you move here, it's more normal. People like think that it's a normal thing to. Yeah, the the main difference between. Um, Overdose and a uh, normal rebellion set is that when we broke into the scene in 2016, we obviously had an objective of being something brand new. Even though we loved um, hardstyle f from early on, like the mainstream sound, we thought if we want to be artists, then we need to sound different. And it became a, actually an obsession, you know, like when we were making music, sometimes we'd have a good idea, but if we felt like it sounded like something that was already there, we would start again. So in the beginning, that created like an obscurity, you know, it was like, you hate it or you love it. And from developing our skills, you know, we kind of like went back the way because that's what we loved before. And we tried to make like become artists and make, yeah, tracks that weren't more than just for the shock factor. But what we noticed in 2018 was that we were also leaving something behind and we didn't want to do that, so we thought the best way to keep that going was a live act. And that's why it's overdose, because we feel like that's what we used to be. We were like over the top and stuff. And we thought if we can create a live act like that, then at least, you know, we can still do the, that type of music and keep the people happy that, that loved us for that. So, yeah, the difference is basically how, how hard the tracks are. Now, my favourite uh, track from Rebellion probably would have to be Uprising. Not for the fact that like it's like technically a masterpiece or whatever, but the era and what the track stood for was uh, a huge part of our career and a huge part of our lives. It's uh, always have really good memories to the track. But from the the new era, it would probably have to be a, a new track, Ghost in Us. Well, um, in relation to the the question we answered about overdose, what we also noticed after doing overdose was that we were very good at doing. Um, both sides of the coin and um, so we were making tracks like Never Back Down and The Edge which are extremely like euphoric and and melodic and we also could do overdose and we were noticing that we were very good at opposite sides but we'd never really made a track that was halfway between 
and we set that challenge like I think just before Corona we wanted to try and do that um, but we thought it would be easier than it was because actually the reason why yeah, most people don't try it is because it shouldn't work you know like technically it shouldn't work you either you're supposed to find the track yeah hard and aggressive or the other way around but yeah we thought you know if we can if we can mix both then we can create something really really cool so that's what um, our latest track really has it has the hard side of rebellion and also has the soft side and the melodic side so yeah, it's really well balanced i would say mm -hmm. it sounds uh, the two styles complement each other really well i think gary's dream collaboration would be bring me the rising the reason why we're a duo is because it's the same answer he, he would also uh, want to collaborate bring me the horizon uh, we've spoken about that for years i mean a lot of people go on about dreams and and they're not really dreams they're, they're pretty attainable like in hard style you know like everyone collabs with everyone already but i think if you really want to be creative your dream should be something that's probably not attainable not attainable and yeah they would be really yeah. it will happen one day yeah i'm, 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 I'm sure of it it's always we love other music and i mean if we could get away with playing other music in our sets we probably would but i think the the hard style scene is kind of like it needs to be hard style okay. I, th I think for the future we would love to be able to have like um like rebellion shows instead of like it feeling just like a hard style party you know like it would be cool to be able to have a musical like tour journey. as rebellion you know like the same way a band tours um yeah and then we could be open to do more things but yeah to be honest when we dj we always we always go back to how it affects the dance floor like every time we play and we have a, a song that we like but we know is not that great on the dance floor and we play it we always realize you know like yeah it doesn't work so there is two different like sides you need to have like the listening listenable music but you also need to think about the dance floor yeah i mean that's one thing we've always pretty, been pretty good at so it's good to explore both sides um gary once fell off the stage and twice twice <laughs> and was also hit he stood in front of a co2 cannon and it while uh, and it, 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 there's a video of it and it's like you know like it's like he's been set on fire and someone's putting him out with a, a fire extinguisher <laughs> The biggest fail that I, I had PTSD for a long time. We had uh, we won a competition for playing at Radical Redemption's party, and like second track, and I fucking pressed pause on the music, and it cut out. Well, I didn't even press pause. I pressed Q, which Starts puts the, the track again, yeah. all the way back to the mix intro. So there's no like you need to fast forward it. So oh man, I, and after that, I, like I, I played the scenario over in my head like okay. loads of times. So, so <laughs> I'm actually getting flashbacks <laughs> right now. So, no, but if something like that happens, you, you, need, you, need, to, you, you need, need to own, own it, man. Yeah, yeah. You need to be like, yeah, no, fuck this, let's, uh, who's ready for like the next bang or whatever, you know? I, th I think it's been aware of like where you are in that moment, you know, like if you're an experienced DJ that plays like a hundred times a year, then I think it's m a more bigger deal, you know, because yeah, you shouldn't be making those mistakes. But in the beginning, like that was our first booking and we were still hard on ourselves as though that was like, you know, we'd play the climax or something. Which is a good mentality, but if it makes you scared to go back on stage, then you, yeah. know, you, need, you need to forget it. So, like, if uh, you ever make a DJ mistake, just own it, man. Capsalon. All day long. Yes, Capsalon. I agree. Vodka. Oh, vodka. Easy. Right. Dogs. Dogs. Yeah. Scotland. Netherlands. Raw kick. Raw kick, probably, yeah. Indoor. Indoor. Nice and sweaty. Never perform again. Yeah, I probably. Think. Yeah, depends. You can do the performing, I'll. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it. We'll cover both we'll angles. We'll cover both angles, yeah. One of keep, keep the rebellion machine going. <laughs> rebellion. Re rebellion. Okay. Probably. Yeah, so obviously we agree on most things, which, uh, yeah, is healthy to be in a duo, because I think if you disagree on everything, then yeah, you probably shouldn't be together, but... Yeah, the things we disagree on usually end up resulting in a better uh, Out outcome. outcome and whatever we're trying to do anyway, so... Yeah, that's the most important thing.
Yo guys, um, so we're in the studio now um, and we're just going to do a quick run through some of the most important things about uh, our latest track, Ghost in Us, um, that we feel you would be interested in. So the way we got to this track was uh, we were looking to make a, a track that was really well balanced between like our harder side and our, our more like uh, commercial uh, melodic side. So we, we got sent this vocal, uh, which is... Uh, it's a really cool vocal that we really liked. Yeah, when we normally when we look for vocals, um, it's not just about how good the the singer is. It's more about like what it means and what it, the underlying meaning is. Because even when even if the fans don't get it. Like for us to be creative, we really need to feel like there's some sort of concept yeah. in there. And mm. I think the ghost in us concept, uh, about like the ghost in the shell and like the yeah, the real reality of what's inside you, like it's really strong to base a, a whole track from. Yeah. So that was what really connected us with the, even just the one line ghost in us. Yeah, you can really base the atmosphere of the track around the the whole concept of ghost in us. So. Yeah, we can. It, uh, another thing is we we try and see things visually sometimes, and if you can hear a vocal and already visually see, you know, like the, the even the artwork and the video clip, just things that are going to be connected to the song, then you know that the creation process will be more clear, um, than just making a random song that you're just making for fun. So yeah, from uh, the vocal, we really wanted to have the melody kind of reflect the chorus of the uh, the vocal. So we picked uh, small melodies from the, the vocal and really built our melody around that. And uh, this is how the melody sounds. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, really That's hands up, but yeah. also like quite an emotional kind of journey rather than just um, simple, which is, yeah, really good addition to the vocal that's already feels like that also. Exactly. So yeah, um, let's move on to some of the kicks in the track. Um, like we said before, um, the objective of this track was not only to make a big track, a melodic track, but also something that um, would destroy a dance floor, like um, like your typical rebellion so um, songs. So we thought, yeah, we need to involve <laughs> quite a lot of kicks that do different things. Um, so yeah, I think the first kick experiment on when we've ever made is actually the first one in the track, um, which sounds a bit like... Yeah, it's a uh, it's a really good like opening kick and um, in true rebellion style we like to you know like flip the style of the kick completely um, and yeah we've done that for the second part sounds a bit. So as you can hear, that's probably more like um, normal rebellion kick, but it's not normal. It's in, in, it's a little bit in general, but extreme. For uh, our but sound, it fits really well in the package where everything else that's going on in the track. It really, it doesn't seem too extreme because of everything else, else is, is going, going on, on in the track. Yeah. And, so, um, yeah. and then uh, we just have the 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 kicks that obviously go along with the melody that are kind of standard, but at the same time, still very powerful. <laughs> Just your uh, standard pitch kicks, and then at the end, uh, we took the the pitch kick and uh, you know uh, played around with the the layers. I did a little bit more reverb to give the track uh, more movement, and then we have these kicks at the end that are a little bit harder. Yeah. 
Yeah, yep. I think um, yeah, we wanted to leave the track, you know, on a on a big note, like with lots of drive, and I think yeah, the last section, yeah, it's kind of no thrills. It's more just drive Straight to the point. Yeah, and, and uh, we have some more gaty kicks at the end. The little layers playing a you know the drivey rhythm, so yeah, that's the the kicks. So yeah, um, let's have a look at some of the yeah details that we feel separates it from uh, just you know our our, our normal tracks, and um, because in the break we really wanted to try and do something um, that still kept the momentum going but was yeah cinematic, because um, sometimes you know when you add too much in the break. You know, people, especially in hardstyle, they just want to get to the melodic part and the, the drop. So we thought, how can we have something that's cool, cinematic, and still, you know, keeps the track rolling? And um, so we came up with this kind of like breakdown. Yeah, really yeah, fresh sounding, like yeah, um, really cinematic, and uh, of course, when you hear it with the vocal, it it goes along really nicely. <laughs> the vocal's not there. Cut, <laughs> cut that out. Yes, here is the vocal. Yeah. yeah. So you can see all the elements are here, but we also we really like to take it into a mix down uh, project where everything's a little bit easier to look at. So you, yeah. You Probably and another thing also that I've just remembered about the vocal is we were um, yeah because of the hard elements that we introduced, we thought you know maybe we need a a hook line that's a bit more yeah punchier than the the singing vocal. So um, we actually got um, John Joe, who's the uh, last word to record um, just a little hook line to really make the drops more uh, have more impact. Yeah, and this is uh, what it sounds like. Near it's a bit more like aggressive or punchy. Yeah, or... yeah adds a different feeling, so you can create the continue that vibe into the drops. Whereas if you were just to have the the end uh, vocal, it wouldn't have the same Impact. effect of the the singing vocal almost. Yeah, that, that's normally leading into something more, yeah, like epic or melodic. But to lead into something a bit more aggressive, you need to obviously the hook line to feel a bit like similar. Exactly. So when we put all these elements together, it sounds a bit like this.